So, I'm interested to find out how you define a creative city. Yes, it's, a, <clears throat> it's an interesting concept because we're all creative. Uh, cities are only as good as the people that inhabit them. The city isn't creative, it's the, the city people mm -hmm. that are creative. Uh, and of course, increasingly, cities are cosmopolitan places. Um, a city like New York, more people that work in the creative industries in New York don't come from New York originally. So they are magnets for creativity and uh, creative people. Uh, a lot of students who come to study in creative cities choose to stay there and uh, set up as practitioners, set up their businesses, which is quite a good sign, I think, that a place is a creative place when people and talent comes and wants to, uh, wants to stay there. So is it a city that fosters creativity in people? Yes, I think the way that can be translated, because you can't make people creative, mm -hmm. because they be creative now, I mean, that's the, the last thing you can do, the worst thing you can do, really, um, is, is, is to foster uh, creativity, being very open, that means being open to outsiders, open to new ideas, uh, risk-taking, and that might manifest itself in urban you know, design, in buildings, in, <clears throat> in perhaps projects, ideas that uh, you don't know whether they're going to be successful. In other words, not being playing safe all the time, and particularly not copying other cities, because that that's uh, that's fatal, really. Mm -hmm. To say to be you know Guggenheim, Seoul, or um, Incheon Valley, try to copy Silicon Valley. Uh, it's quite seductive because city mayors and leaders think, well, we want to be one of those, and all we want to do to achieve that is to build a Guggenheim or to uh, copy Barcelona. And of course, Seoul and, and Kimche are not Barcelona, not Montreal. You need to build from your, if you like, endogenous, your sort of bottom-up culture and be distinctive. So to be a, a, a creative city in Korea means it needs to reflect the creativity of Korea, not some you know, imported version of another creative concept from another part of the world. Yeah. What's a good example of a creative city? Well, what I cite is, I think Montreal is a good one in that they don't call themselves a creative city, which is quite a good sign, because if you're too upfront and saying, we are a creative city, come and see us, perhaps, you know, it's like being called, cool. it's being uncalled to be called cool or, or whatever. But they, they have a design commissioner, the city government employs a design commissioner, for a team, and they have a competition every year, and local businesses, shops, even offices can invest in design, improve the, you know, do a design project around their building. A national uh, comp is held, uh, winners are awarded, but also a whole map of everyone that's entered into that is put on the web, and Montreal citizens and visitors can go and see these design projects. But in a way, that's trying to get design and creativity down to the everyday level. So it's not just about the kind of iconic iconic buildings. And Montreal also is a an all-year-round festival city. There's always a festival uh, going on there. So whenever you arrive, you don't say, oh, I've just missed the festival, what a shame. <laughs> there will be something there for you as, as well. Okay. So, so they think they've, they've got the balance right between their, their Montreal, their, their, their Quebecois, the Canadian, and their international sort of cultural mix uh, very well. Another good example, a different example, would be Barcelona, often again cited. Um, after the 1992 Olympics there, the mayor, again the mayor has, has, has led this uh, throughout in partnership with industry, have invested in the public realm, in public art, opening up new promenades, making it much more visitor and pedestrian friendly, mm -hmm. uh, something Seoul I think will have to think about in the future. You know, how's, how is it going to balance the motor car with the, the wide roads around sustainability. I and think they are make, doing that, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, it's, it's a long-term project, and I think all major cities are grappling with this big um, 21st century mm -hmm. challenge. Yeah. So does being creative give a city a greater competitive edge over other Yes, cities? I think if, if you're trying to sell what might be a bit of a culture creativity, it's a bit marginal to the serious business of high-tech or industry uh, or whatever. I think the evidence now over many years points to the fact that if you invest in design and creativity, that is where product innovation, where innovation in services, service delivery, that could be public services as well as new product design and industrial design, that firm performance, economic growth, profitability, and ultimately city growth, because more investment follows, and more creative people and creativists will follow that, you have a kind of a virtuous circle 
so I think the, the evidence that uh, a creative city uh, outperforms cities, if you like, that don't have that creative edge, and particularly design is a critical component of that, not just aesthetic design, but, but uh, smart design, thinking uh, it, could be a, it could be textiles, uh, it could be urban design, it could be electric cars, it could be, I mean, creativity, if you think about it, here we are on a TV show, Cre creativity is all about content. We have more TV channels, we have more radio stations, we have more mobile phones, we have more internet. We need to fill them up. We need to have, what fills them up is culture. Mm -hmm. So creativity is critically important for these new media, new and old media. So having that creative uh, idea which also distinguishes you from others is, is critically important. So in a way, creativity is much more mainstream, if you think about it, than for any other economic or industrial sector. Then what are some physical um, conditions or prerequisites, if you will, uh, that a city needs in order to yes. become a creative city? Different things. I, I mentioned uh, students, art and design students that, that are studying or come to study in a city that, that then graduate and want to set up in business. Well, they need workspace, they need premises, mm. they need a form, affordable workspace. If you're a practicing artist when you first start out, you can't afford to pay expensive rent. So having affordable workspace and studio space is very important. Having business support and advice, which is available for creative firms, because creative industries quite often, they're not like normal businesses. They don't conform to the same business model. They don't have a lot of uh, capital, investment capital. They don't always need it. They're very flexible because they have to respond to market trends in fashion and taste. They can create fashion and taste. So they are very important, if you like, in creating a buzz and creating a, creating a new market. But they need that flexibility. Uh, so I think location, spaces is very important. For a city like Seoul, yeah. which is high maintenance, high cost, densely populated, yes. what hope is there of becoming a creative city? I think that is a big challenge. And it, it's, it, it, on one level, it's a national planning issue in terms of what what is the relationship between Seoul and the wider metropolitan and the the, 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 the edge city sprawl that, of course, uh, uh, major cities like Seoul and, and regions have experiencing? Its relation to other regions, uh, decisions about uh, should it be distributing activity in other areas. An example in Britain is that our British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC, is in the process of relocating one third of its production resource and facilities to Salford and Manchester in the northwest of England. Mm -hmm. It's been quite difficult, as you can imagine, to sell for the, uh, the people that work in London. But that's, that's an interesting national decision to actually invest in film and TV production in a, another very successful creative city region outside of London. So I think there's some quite hard choices to make in terms of where you locate. But I think coming back to, coming back to the city itself, where you, you still have development, you, we, we still have cranes, uh, despite the global uh, recession, there's obviously investment still going on. There's enough confidence in, in building business parks and digital cities, uh, north of Seoul, for instance. Where there's opportunities for development, the, the thinking, therefore, has to be, well, this isn't just about upmarket, up high-tech firms that can pay very high rent. Should we be building some spaces, the design as well as some spaces that uh, startup firms can also be located there alongside the larger firms? Because the way the creative economy works... It's that relationship between the TV companies like yourselves and small independent producers. Nice. They need that connection. They need that connectivity. So it's thinking a bit creatively mm -hmm. about the urban development process. Yeah. We're talking about creative cities today with Professor Graham Evans of London Metropolitan University. We'll be right back. Stay with us.